Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Grissa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am all about the fall vibes with the Gathered Wheat Bundle from the Stampin' Up! July-December mini catalog. Now this is one of those bundles that as soon as I saw it in the catalog, it went right to the top of my must-have list. I love the images in this. They just... They speak to the country girl in my heart. Um, I grew up um, in the country. My parents were farmers for many years. And so just the, the whole idea of the harvest and gathering wheat is just, it's ingrained in who I am. So for me, this bundle was like right up near the top. Plus the images are beautiful. So I have been having great fun playing with this and I'm going to show you three projects today and I'm going to show you a couple others. Um, I actually recorded a reel for my Instagram um, page. If you follow me over on Instagram, you'll be able to check that out later this week as well. So lots to share. Um, I'm excited to share it with you and we're going to do some stamping. Okay, now let me just pull up my video here on my iPad so I can see who's joining me. Come on, where are you? Oh, help if I went to the right page, wouldn't it? There I am. <laughs> okay, who's here? We got Krista and Sonia, Laura, Peggy. Hello, ladies. Thanks for sharing, Sonia. I appreciate it. All right. So we, as I said, we are working with the Gathered Wheat uh, Bundle from the Mini, and I absolutely love the images in this set. So let me flip my camera. We are going to get right to some stamping. And uh, I'll show you what we're going to make. Okay. Hi, Joyce. Welcome. All right. Give me a sec. Let's do the flipperoo here. Oh, my lamp is right in the way. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. There we go. That's better. Okay. Make sure we have good light. All righty. I think we're in business. Okay, so here is uh, where you'll find this um, bundle in the catalog. It's not part of a suite, uh, but it is on page 51 of the mini catalog. And I, like, what's not to love about the beautiful images in this set? And of course, it has a spatter stamp, which immediately makes a stamp a must-have, or a stamp set of a must-have, as far as I'm concerned. So let me show it to you up close and personal. So here we go. Um, there is our stamp set, some lovely sentiments in uh, beautiful fonts. And then of course we have the dies. So we have some dies that cut stamped images and then we have several dies that cut different shapes. This border die is beautiful. You'll get to see that in action in a little bit. And this actually cuts and scores a banner, which you'll see on one of the samples I'm going to show at the end. So fantastic bundle. And uh, let's get to some stamping. Okay. Hi, Deb. Hi, Kath. Happy to have you joining me today. So here we go. This is the first one we're going to do. I posted this yesterday. Super quickie card. Okay, we all love quickies, right? Quickie cards, that is. Um, so I'm starting with a piece of four by five and a quarter inch vanilla cardstock. And I'm going to bring in my blender brushes. I've got a yellow and a brown. So we're going to start with some crushed curry. Hi, Laura. Welcome. And I'm going to start blending some of the crushed curry ink on the bottom edge of my vanilla cardstock. So now you can do as much of this or as little as you like. Um, it's totally a matter of preference. I kind of like the, the bottom edge to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to just apply... A little bit more ink towards the bottom and kind of have it fade upwards. This just reminds me of a golden wheat field ready for harvest in the fall. So we'll just add a little bit more ink here. Hi Judy from Wawa, how are you? Welcome. Glad you could join me. So how's everybody loving? Well, I don't know if it's warm and not fall like where you are. It is still quite warm here. Um, really like short summer weather um, here right now, but we are supposed to have a big weather change, a uh, big pattern change on Thursday, which just happens to be the first day of fall. We're supposed to have quite chilly fall like temperatures. So that will be a big change from what we have had. 
So there is our inked cardstock. Okay, now we're gonna stamp our wheat image as soon as I find it. In the wrong basket. Here we go. So this little um, sort of stock of wheat, I just absolutely love this image. And we're gonna stamp it several times across the bottom um, using early espresso ink. Okay, so I'm gonna do this full strength. Hi Connie from Minnesota, hot and humid. Yeah, it's been the same here this week. Uh, but it is supposed to get a whole lot cooler um, starting Thursday. And I got to admit, I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. I love that cool, crisp fall air. I'm not in a hurry for snow, but I do love that sort of nip that is in the fall air. So I've stamped once all the way across full strength with my early espresso. And then I'm just kind of coming in a second time stamped off once. Okay, and that gives us a little bit of depth. Then we're going to come in with that magical spatter stamp and I'm going to stamp off and I'm just going to kind of stamp it across my wheat image. Just kind of going across, no real rhyme or reason. And then as I go towards the top, I'm actually going to stamp off twice because I want it to sort of fade as I get towards the top of the wheat. There we go, just like that. Quick and easy, gotta love it. All right, now I wanted to dull this down a little bit. You see the difference? This is more of a gold, this is still quite yellow. So to make it look more golden, um, we are going to bring in some um, crumb cake ink and we're going to sponge just a little bit and I should have made sure this didn't have any espresso. Oh, that's the wrong color, this is purple. Hang on, got the wrong brush. Where is my brown brush? Okay, maybe this isn't purple. Oh no, it's brown. Okay, we're safe. It looks purple at the side, but that's probably just the bleed from the espresso. All right, we're good. I just didn't want to wreck my ink. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pick up a little bit of crumb cake and I'm not gonna go super heavy handed, um, but I am going to add a little bit of crumb cake along that bottom edge. And you're gonna notice it's gonna dull down some of that bright yellow and give it more of a golden look. Okay, a little bit closer to this. And then I'm gonna come all the way up and around as well to just give a little bit of shadow and sort of dull down a, that um, sort of bold vanilla. Hi Claire, hi Penny. How are you guys doing? Glad you could join me today. We are playing with the Gathered Wheat Bundle from the Mini, one of my faves. So there we go. Wasn't that quick and easy? I love quick and easy cards. So now it's just a matter of stamping our sentiment and sticking everything down. So we're going to start by adhering our sponge panel to our card base. So this is a piece of crumb cake cardstock, five and a half by eight and a half inches, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we're just going to fold that in half. And we're gonna add a little adhesive to the back of our panel. And we're gonna pop this on to the front of our card. Super, super simple. I wanted to do a nice, easy card to start, just to show how beautiful this stamp set is without a whole lot of bells and whistles. All right, so then we have a banner that I've die cut using the Stylish Shapes dies. And we're going to stamp our sentiment. It says, my heart is filled with gratitude in espresso ink. I'm just going to close up my crumb cake and get it out of the way. So I'm just going to ink this up. Now I'm going to stamp it towards sort of the, the, the right side of my banner a little bit. Because I'm actually going to cut off part of the end of the banner. Okay, so there is my sentiment. Now I'm actually going to take that spatter stamp that still has ink on it from before and I'm just going to kind of come across there and add a little texture across behind my um, sentiment. Okay, so now we're going to trim off the end of our banner. I'm just going to pull in my paper trimmer here as soon as I move my catalog because my paper trimmer is buried under my catalog. So we're going to slide this in and I'm not really measuring but I guess this lines up kind of at two and three quarters. So I just want to cut off um, part of the end because I want it to sit flush with the edge of my panel there. 
Okay, so it's going to go on like that. Before we do that, we're going to add some of these beautiful little heads of wheat here that are die cut from the Distressed Gold Specialty Paper. Love, love that paper. And these look, just look amazing um, die cut from that paper. So we're going to add a little bit of adhesive to the end of our banner. And we're just going to arrange these little guys in behind the banner. So they're kind of peeking out there. Almost like they're gathered behind the banner. That one's out too far. We'll tuck that one in a little bit. There we go. Okay. Simple. All right. Now that's going to go on with a couple dimensionals. So we'll pop it on. Hi, Brenda. Love this stamp set and bundle. You're going to, if you have this bundle um, and haven't played with it, you will love it. It is such a beauty. All right, so we're going to put this on. I'm going to attempt to get it straight here. We shall see, because again, I'm not looking straight down. That's crooked, I can tell even from here. Let's see. That looks pretty good, I think. Okay, and then our last touch, well, second last touch, is a little bow. So here I have some of that um, silver threaded twine, that really heavy stuff, uh, from the catalog, from the mini. And I like to pull out the threads from this. Um, I find the twine as is, is a little bit too coarse for cards, especially if you're tying bows. But if you pull out the threads, you have this beautiful, fuzzy, rustic looking twine that makes fantastic bows. And I am doing a single, not a double. So we're just going to tie a little bow and tidy this up. And I just love that it's kind of messy, right? It's got a little bit of fuzz on it from um, pulling it out. And it's just, it just looks rustic and it adds some lovely texture. So we'll trim off our tails. And that is going to pin or get stuck right sort of in the V on our banner as soon as I find a glue dot here. So we'll take a glue dot, roll it into a little glue booger. I'm just going to press it right in the V of my banner, just like that. And then we're just going to press the knot of our bow into the V. And I'm going to trim these just a teensy bit shorter. Okay. And then the last touch are some champagne rhinestones. They are my go-to fall embellishment. Uh, they just have this perfect sort of tint to them. Um, and they're kind of like, um, what's the lizard that changes colors? Can't think of it right now. This is this is my senior brain trying to remember the name, but they change colors depending on what you put them with. Okay, so on this they look more gold. Um, if you put them on something with a bit of pink, they'll look a little bit pinky. So they're pretty awesome. All right, so there we go. Now I'll show you on the inside of my. Um, card. This is my sample. I just did a little bit more sponging and a little bit more stamping to um, add a panel on the inside. Okay, but really quick and easy card. Doesn't take long at all, but so, so, so pretty. All right, let me clean up my mess here a bit. Get some things out of the way. And we're going to move on to number two. Here we go. Oh, I just threw something on the floor. I threw my take your pick on the floor. That is not good can't be losing that one. Okay. All right. Next card is this one. So this one is all about yummy, rich gold and lots of heat embossing. I love the combination of gold and chameleon. Thank you, ladies. That's the word I was trying to think of. Yes. See? Hive mind. You guys are awesome. All right. Um, so what I was talking about here is how much I love very vanilla and gold together. I just think it's a lovely, rich um, color combination. So on this one, I've done some heat embossing. Um, I've got a little bit of that distressed gold in here, a little bit of gold thread from some ribbon and some great texture. So let's get to it. I've done most of my embossing ahead of time. Actually, all of my embossing ahead of time. So this is really just about assembly. So to start, I have a four by five and a quarter inch piece of vanilla cardstock that I've embossed using the time worn type embossing folder. And I love the, just the, the texture on it. It's such a yummy folder. And then I have one of those gorgeous die cuts. So this is from the die set. Look at how beautiful that border die is. Is it not fantastic? Now I have die cut this from distressed gold cardstock that I've added some adhesive sheets to the back before I die cut. Okay. Um, they, it still cuts beautifully with the adhesive sheets on the back and it sure makes this easier to stick down. 
So we're going to start by peeling off our backing from the adhesive. And now this is going to go on. How far down did I put this? Mm -mm -mm. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six squares up. So six squares up from the bottom would be about an inch and a half. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to stick it down. So I'm going to line up one edge. Actually, I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm just going to lay this across so that I can line it up with my grid on either side and then I'll trim off either side. Okay, so there is that beautiful gold trim. Then we're gonna flip it over and cut off the excess. Now I could have cut this to exactly four inches so that it fit on my car before I die cut, but I am a big fan of just easy, <laughs> easy peasy. The fewer steps, the better, okay? So there is that. Now we are going to add our layers. So this is a very vanilla stitched rectangle. Okay. I think it's maybe the th mm, third or fourth largest. I can't remember. Um, I'll put the measurements up afterwards so you can figure out exactly which one I used. And then I have stamped and heat embossed some of that spatter stamp, um, just sort of across the middle to act as a sort of a, an anchor for my wheat sheaf when I put it on. Okay. Now I'm going to layer this on top of another piece of that distress gold specialty paper. We're going to have just a little bitty border peeking out. Now you certainly could do your die cutting, right? If you want to die cut some of your uh, wheat heads out of this before you layer it, you totally could, okay? Because you're not going to see the holes, um, but I already had had a whole bunch of die cuts of these left over. So I didn't do any die cutting into this one, but you totally could, okay? So you don't waste all of that. Uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead and glue this down onto our Distress Gold layer. There we go. Okay. And then that is going to get glued centered on our um, background panel. I just noticed I must have had a little bit of yellow ink on my finger because there's a little smidge. You probably can't see it on the camera. There's just a little hint of yellow. Good thing this is kind of a spattery card. It'll, it'll work. I'm not going to worry too much. All right. So we're going to go ahead and center this as best we can. It's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. That's what makes it handmade, right? All right, now we're going to go ahead and glue that onto our card base. So my card base is thick, very vanilla. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. So I like using the thick uh, vanilla for card bases. It's super sturdy. It's much heavier than the regular vanilla. I don't like using this for layers. It's too thick, right? It adds too much bulk to your card. But they make fantastic bases. So we're going to add a little bit of glue. And we're going to pop this on. The other nice thing about doing um, layers of the same color is you don't have to worry about getting it perfectly centered and straight because nobody notices when it's a little bit off. Now, people ask me often about why I layer the same color. Why don't I just emboss the card base? You totally can do that. Okay. Um, if you wanted to just run this through and emboss the card base and build a card on that, you absolutely can. I just have a preference. I like the inside of my card to be clean. I don't want to see the texture, um, from the front. That's just a personal preference. Totally fine. If you, if that's, if you don't care, like no biggie. All right. So now we are going to work on our little arrangement. So look at how beautiful that um, stock of wheat is embossed in gold. Just stunning. So we're going to pop this up on the front of our card here. So I'm using a couple of mini dimensionals to pop this guy up. Whoopsie, they're sticking to my fingers. I'm going too fast. Yeah, so I don't have much of a nail left. Teaching does that too. You break nails left and right. By the end of the semester, I got nothing left. <laughs> All right, so we're going to pop this on. I'm going to do it to the side. I want it to hang off my rectangle just a little bit, just for some interest. Okay. Then we have a beautiful label. This is actually from the Waves dies. Um, it's a beautiful label that I just, I love the shape of, and it worked really well with this sentiment. Now I should mention, where did I put my stamp set? The, this sentiment is actually a partially inked image. So the full um, sentiment says simply thankful for all you do. But I wanted to do one that was just simply thankful. So I just took a post-it note, stuck it on my stamp over top of the second line of text, inked it with my Versamark, then pulled the post-it off and stamped. 
Okay, so there, that's um, a quick and easy tip for getting a partial image uh, from your sentiments, and it makes your sentiments a little bit more versatile. Okay, all right, so now we are going to go ahead and add some more wheat grain heads here to the back of our label. So I have one cut from gold and one cut from the vanilla. They're just so pretty. So I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive to the back of my label. And we're gonna add our gold wheat sheaf there. And then our vanilla one. Now this one I poked all the bits out of. On my sample, I left the bits in. It's kind of a matter of choice. Um, I kind of wish I'd left them in because I like it, the look of it with the bits in, but that's okay. We're gonna add just a little bit of adhesive to the front of our card. And we're going to layer our second wheat head on there. And then we're going to add a little bit of thread from this beautiful uh, metallic gold ribbon. So this is from the annual catalog. Now before I do anything, I'm gonna put a little bit more adhesive on the back of this because it's much easier to maneuver this stuff if it's already sticky on the back where you're gonna stick it down. So what I've done is I've trimmed off the finished edge on one side of my ribbon here. You can see where I've already pulled the threads to make my sample. So now I'm just gonna pull out a couple more threads and I'm gonna pull them all the way out. So I just kind of pull them as a group all the way down. Okay, and now I have these really fine little threads of gold. And I just love the look of this. This reminds me of like the hair on a wheat sheaf, right? It just, oh, love it. So I'm going to start by sort of sticking it down. And then I'm just going to kind of like make some little loop-de-loops here. I'm not being super particular or careful or trying to have them a particular size. I'm just kind of looping it around. Do you see why having the adhesive down already makes it easier? I can just kind of stick it as I go. Now, of course, that's not going to stick to that because I don't have any adhesive there. So we're going to add a little bit more here. And then we're going to loop this around and stick her down. Okay. There's not really a wrong way to do this. You just kind of want it to look sort of messy and, and kind of loopy. Okay. So now we're going to, and see that still doesn't want to stick. We're going to put a dimensional right over top of that and hold it down. <laughs> So here we go, dimensional, there we go. That will hold that loop. And then we'll add one more. Now is that gonna work? Nope, because that's gonna layer over top of our wheat. So we're gonna pull this off. See here, I thought I was being smart by holding it in place with a dimensional. Not so much. All right, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put a little bit of adhesive on here. And then that will stay put while we stick her down. Actually, let's just have these go across this way. There we go. Problem solved. Told you there was no wrong way to do this. <laughs> Messy, but it works. So we're going to put, oh, I already put a little adhesive on here. So now we're going to go ahead and stick this down. I want, because this hung off to the left, this is going to hang off to the right a little bit. Um, it's just going to kind of come across where my um, little border piece is. And we'll stick that down. Okay, now these extra long little strands here. We're just going to trim. I don't want to trim them all the same length. I kind of want them to be sort of random. And then same thing up top. We've got these little guys sticking up here. Just going to give them a little haircut so they're not all the same. Okay, and there we go. Isn't that pretty? I just love that extra little touch of the strands of gold. It just adds a lovely little subtle bit of texture. Okay, but there you go. No bling, no bows. I know. What the heck? <laughs> okay. You like it? I hope you like it. Oh, Laura, I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sorry. It's a great set. You will love it. Um, it really is, is a beautiful one. All right, moving on. The last one is this uh, fun fold. It's a spanner card. Um, so I actually used DSP from two different DSP packs on this one. Um, so it opens like this. And then it opens like this. So I thought it would be fun. I know lots of people who have fall birthdays um, and lots of men who have fall birthdays, my husband included. So it's always nice to have some more masculine um, ideas for, for fall birthdays. So this one would be perfect to give to a man in the fall. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do this one. Spanner cards are a super easy fun fold. 
Um, if you are someone who is newer to stamping um, or who, you know, is a little nervous about doing fun folds, this is a really great one. So this card starts as a five and a half by eight and a half um, piece of cardstock. So it's just a, your standard um, half sheet of cardstock. I've scored it in the middle at four and a quarter. Okay. Then I've inserted it into my trimmer and cut at one and a half, one and a quarter, one and a quarter on each end. So one and a quarter and one and a quarter. And that gives me my flaps. And that's all there is to this card. Like it's really that simple. So to start, I'm going to fold this in half, but I'm going to fold the back end over the front just because I want these to stay lying flat. And that will help to make sure that my fold is nice and straight and even. Sometimes when we're folding smaller pieces, um, like these little strips, they end up sort of getting a little wonky. So I find if I fold the uncut side over the cut side, I get straighter folds. Okay. So that is the first step. Now we also, we need to create this spanner piece, right? So that is a one by five and a half inch piece. I should mention this is evening evergreen, this color. Um, so we're going to actually layer this one on. We're going to glue it across the front and it's going to go on. What did I do? I think I did an inch and a half or so. So we'll move this up just a touch. So right about there because our wheat sheaf is going to stick to that. And we kind of want our wheat sheaf to be grounded at the bottom of our card. Okay. So that is going to get glued across. Now, really important point here. We don't want to put glue all the way across this strip. Why? Well, if I stick this down, then I don't have that spanner effect, right? So we're only going to put glue on the ends. So I'm just going to flip this over. I'm going to actually lay this on my cardstock here so I can see where my glue needs to go. So I'm going to put some here and some here. Okay. So I'm just paying attention to where my little side flaps um, end. And then I can go ahead and stick this down. I'm going to lay this flat just so that I can get my grid going here. And it's going to go on right about there. So I'm starting on one side, lining it up with my grid line, and then just having it come across flush like that. Okay. Now I have my card base. Super simple, right? Okay. So let me just crisp this up a little more and now we're going to decorate. So on our side panels here, I have two pieces that are one and one eighth by four and one eighth. Okay. This is from, can you guess? This is from the annual catalog. It's the lovely in linen designer series paper pack. It has this fabulous plaid on one side of on one, on one pattern. Okay. So we're going to glue that right over that spanner piece that we glued across and it's going to kind of disappear. It's just going to, it's not going to be obvious that it is glued right, right, right the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little adhesive here and we'll pop this on. Okay. Same thing on the other side. Whoops. Uh Oh, ran out of seal. It's a crisis. I don't have a refill handy, so we might have to rely on liquid glue for the duration. Good thing this is my last card. Okay, so there we go. All right, now on this panel, we're going to use this pattern, which is from the Lights of Glow DSP pack. All right, I love this bokeh effect. So we're going to glue that on the center panel. So we're going to use a little bit of liquid glue. Let's see how many times I grab my empty seal between now and the end of the video. <laughs> it's kind of reflex reaction. I love my seal. So we're going to get that centered on our center panel here. Okay. And there we go. That's our foundation of our card. Now we're going to decorate. So I have here this beautiful sheaf of wheat. Um, it's stamped just in memento black and then I have colored it just using my dark daffodil delight. This really doesn't require any shading because there's so much detail in the stamped image. Now I notice I haven't colored the rope here. So we're going to do that. I'm going to use my dark crumb cake. We're not going to see much of this part because we're going to actually wrap some twine around here. But just in case part of it does show, I want it to be colored. So I'm just using my dark crumb cake to color the rope here. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is how tired I am. I just tried to put my Tombow lid onto my marker. Yep. It's the third week of school and Lena had band practice this morning. <laughs> I was up at 4.45. All right. 
Here we go. So we're going to take this. Now I have to confess, I am using a retired product. This is the, um, this is from the, um, the occasions catalog. It had the three colors. It was part of the, like the, um, the baseball suite. Do you remember that one from the mini, um, in the spring? And this is the evening evergreen, uh, twine. And it just works so perfectly. I couldn't resist. You could totally use linen thread on this and it would be just fine. Or you could even use some of the twine that we pulled out of the, this stuff. Okay. All right. So we're going to wrap this around. Yes, Laura, this does come with dies. You missed the beginning. I did showcase the dies. Um, so check them out. It is available in a bundle. And uh, when you buy the bundle, you get 10% off, right? So always buy the bundle. That is sort of my rule to live by because there have been times where I thought, oh, you know what? I'm just going to get the dies because I don't really love the stamp set inevitably I always end up going back and buying the stamp set and paying full price for both because you know I don't live by my own rules case in point would be the alpha best bundle from the annual catalog I bought the punch because I thought the punch was really cute and thought oh I probably won't use I have other stamp sets that have letters no went back and bought the stamp set months later <laughs> because I'm a slow learner what can I say all right, so there we go. We wrapped a little bit of that twine around our wheat sheaf. And we're going to trim off our tails here a bit. Get rid of those. Okay. Now this is going to go on to the left of our card front. Now, we just want to make sure that we're not sticking our card shut, right? We still want this to open first before this panel. So when we go to glue this, we're only going to put dimensional sort of on the top part. So I'm going to flip this over. We're going to put dimensionals here and a couple there, and that's it. All right. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem with our card functioning. So I'm going to put one there. I'm actually going to put a mini down here. Okay, so that's going to get stuck. Now, this part here, whoops, what am I doing? This part that overlaps, I can add a, a dimensional here. So I'm going to flip that over and put one right here because that is going to overlap the spanner piece. Do you see that? It's not going to interfere with my card still functioning. Okay, so that's the only tricky part about this one. You just want to be, take care when you're gluing stuff on the front that you're not gluing your card shut. All right, so we're going to stick this on. Right about there, and this is the moment of truth. Yes, it still opens. I have done it correctly. <laughs> there have been many times when I'm not. All right, then we are going to add this lovely die cut sentiment. So this, it looks like it's fussy cut, but it's not. It's from the Charming Sentiments bundle. Now I haven't featured this bundle all by itself because it's, it's, it's mainly sentiments, but the dies have fantastic different shaped dies that are included in it. However, I use this bundle all the time. I love the look of um, die cut or fussy cut sentiments. And this bundle makes it so easy because you don't have to actually fussy cut them. Okay. All right. So we are going to go ahead and stick another little, um, sheaf or head of wheat down. Now this is where I do need my seal. Oh, well, we'll put a little liquid glue and hope it stays put just because I don't want it to wiggle out of, out of the way when I stick this down. Okay. So that is going to get stuck across like that. I'm going to put a couple dimensionals on the right side, a little bit of glue on the left where it overlaps my wheat sheaf. So just a little bit of liquid glue there and a couple dimensionals over here and we'll get rid of our backings and then that is going to see that's not stand put because my glue hasn't dried yet. This is why I love seal. <laughs> I'm working with a handicap today. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's the front of our card. Now, the cool thing about this card is there's actually three surfaces to decorate. Okay. Oh, hi, Cheryl. Oh, you're in wheat country. You absolutely should have this set for sure. I, I was talking about when I, when the, at the beginning of the video, I grew up in the country. So for me, this is one of those must haves, like this whole harvest and gathering wheat. It's just a big, it's a big thing for me from my childhood. So, um, so as I was saying, this card has three surfaces to decorate. So we have our front, then we have this little flat. So we're going to do that right now. So I have another little bit of that beautiful um, die cut border piece. And again, I've got adhesive sheets on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this down. Okay. And then trim off the excess. So we're just going to get rid of our backing here and stick this across. Now we just want to make sure that this is going to go and be hidden 
by the spanner when it closes. So I'm not going to push that, put like press this right into place. I'm just going to double check. Yep, that's a good spot. Okay, I'm also going to check to make sure it's straight. So we'll open it up and just make sure that that is straight across there. And then we're going to flip this over and trim off the excess. So that side's fine. We'll get rid of this little guy. Neat and tidy. Okay, there we go. All right, and then we're going to add our Because You Totally Deserve It sentiment. Now you can glue this flat or you can pop it up. I popped it up on here, but I noticed when I go to put this in the envelope, I've got kind of double thickness here. So on my on this one, I'm actually going to glue it flat just so it slides in the envelope a little better. So we'll add a little bit of liquid glue and center this over our little border piece. Hopefully straight. Okay, then we have our inside layer. Now the cool thing about the inside layer is that when we open this top layer, we actually see part of it. So it kind of decorates this second layer um, as well as the inside. So we want, want to make sure we do something nice that's going to be visible when we open this flap, right? So this is going to sit in here. We're going to stamp on either side. So we're going to bring in our wheat stock again. I'm going to get rid of the early espresso. And where's my memento? There it is. Um, we're going to stamp this in the memento black. So I'm just going to ink this up. We're going to stamp it once on the left side. And then a second time on the right over here. And so we're going to do a little coloring. This is pretty quick. So we're going to stamp the the grain heads with dark daffodil delight and again i'm not doing any shading this is really just adding some quick color i'm not being super careful um just because of the shading and the beautiful detail on the stamped image you really don't need to do a whole lot just adding a little bit of color okay so same thing on the other side and this guy I find the Dark Daffodil Delight is a really great, it's very close to Crush Curry, which I think is why we don't have a Crush Curry set of Stampin' Blends. Um, the Dark Daffodil is very, very close. All right, then we are going to color the, sorry, the leaves. I use the Light Soft Succulent. So it's kind of in the same color family, same shade family as the Evening Evergreen. It's kind of got that bluey um, green, but it's got a lot of gray in it, which makes it just, just subtle enough that it works quite well. So again, I'm not being super careful. I'm just adding a little hint of color to my image. It almost looks watercolored when you do it this way, if you don't color it completely. Okay. And then we're going to add just a little bit of texture along the bottom with um, our spatter stamp and some soft succulent ink. So let me just give this a good stamping off. And then we're going to add just some subtle bits of texture. And then I'm going to come back full strength here. There we go. And that just kind of grounds our wheat sheaves, our wheat, wheat stalks, I should say. Now this is going to get glued inside our card. So we'll add a little bit of glue here. And we'll pop this in. I should have mentioned this is a four by five and a quarter inch piece of basic white. Again, I will put the measurements up in the video description afterwards. So you have them so you could recreate these to your heart's content. And there we go. Done and done. So we open one layer and we open the second layer. You certainly could add another sentiment on the inside if you wanted to, but I kind of felt like that was enough and gives you lots of space to write a message. All right. So let me bring back all three for now. And then I'm going to show you a couple more. So there's the three we made today. Now I'll show you a couple. So this one you're going to see show up as a reel on my Instagram channel later on this week. A um, little bit of sponging, a little bit of stamping, a whole lot of beautiful die cuts. So there is one. Here is another one. Um, so this one uses some of the um, Rustic Harvest DSP and then I did a little ink blending on my focal image. There are some of those beautiful die cuts. 
And then do you remember the gatefold book fold card I showed you last week? So this is another take on it using this bundle. There's that gorgeous border piece again. This one opens up like that. And finally, this one is one I actually designed for my upcoming Bacard Buffet. Love this one. Use that timeless, um, or sorry, time-worn type embossing folder again. Um, super simple, but really, really pretty. So there you go. There are some more ideas with the Gathered Week Bundle. Okay, hope you like them. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for joining me. Um, I am betting next week when we get together, it will feel very much more like fall here. So I hope you have a great week, everyone. And I will see you next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.